Every element on a web page basically consists out of four parts, and that is the content, padding, the border, and the margin, often referred to as a box model. Welcome to Back to Basics with JP, and in this video, we're talking at beginner's level about padding. You would have noticed that padding is everywhere throughout the Brizzy Builder, whether it's Brizzy WordPress, Brizzy Cloud, or any other builder for that matter, you're going to find padding. I have a text element here. If I go to the settings and my styling, I have at the very top here padding. If I go to this one over here, which is an icon and a line element, I go to the settings, styling, and there again, I have the padding. Same thing for the button. If I highlight the button, I go to the settings, we have padding. Not only on an element basis, but we also have it on a block basis. I go to the block, the settings, and again, styling, and we have the padding here. You would have noticed that you can link and unlink the sites. Once you link them, it applies to all the sites. And if you unlink them, you are taking control individually over each and every site. Apart from elements and blocks, you're going to find sometimes you have sub level padding within certain elements like the accordion and the table elements. But exactly what does padding do? Let's first have a look at what it does. Here we have this section, and I'll just increase this so we have a little bit more of this in the picture. I've got three columns here. Off the bat, you know that they just don't look good. And this is more or less, well, more than less, the main purpose of padding. It gives your page structure within the elements, within the blocks and the sections, and it provides that layout you are looking for. I often say, if you are not sure if you've applied enough padding, just add a little bit more. Better more than less. And here we have a case of no padding applied. The padding here, we apply on the column basis. I'll go to the column, settings, and then styling. And the padding now is selected to the uniform application, which means that all the sides are selected. Now, padding is the area of an element between the content and the border. So this blue box that you see here off the column, we can imagine that is the border of the column element. Any padding you apply is within that element between the border and the content. When we apply this, it adds this negative transparent space. And often people refer to it as white space, but technically it's not white, it's transparent. And why we know it is transparent, if I go to the color of the column and I apply a color, I get the green. So this cannot be white space. It is transparent or negative space, technically. The padding that you apply, you usually do in pixel values, but you also have the option to put it in percentage. Let's just take it down to something a little bit lower, like 10, so that when we put it on percentage, it's not too crazy. What it currently is doing, it is applying 10 pixels between the content and the border of this column at the top, the right, the bottom and the left. If I put it on percentage, it's going to apply 10% of the container, in this case, this column, not the page, not the block, but that container which you are working with. So it's applied 10% here, 10% here, 10% on the left, and 10% on the right, which means that the content area from left to right should take up 80% of the column. And that's the same for the height from the mornings all the way to the end here where you see English, this area should take up 80% of your column height. Drop it back to pixels and we're back to 10 pixels. Let's increase that to around 50 pixels. And now we are going to decouple the sides. Select this icon and it will give you all the sides. Top, right, bottom, left. And many times you're going to find certain methods and ways things work that comes from very, very old ways of building websites that have rippled through in how we do things. And one of those standards is how this sequence works. It always starts at the top, then right, then bottom and left. And again, if you go to any other builder on the market, you're going to find the same sequence. And this is just how the coding happens. It is a standard that has stayed. Now you have control over each of these individually. If I want to increase my top padding, I can drag that up to 100 all the way to the right. And let's do the same for the bottom. 
And if I want to decrease for whatever reason the right, I can do that by dragging it down to, let's say, 20. And I'll do the same for the left, dragging it down to 20. In the event where you cannot get it exactly to the value you want it, simply highlight the value in the value box and type in the value you want. Let's make it 35. And I'll do the same for the right, 35. You can set the percentage independently for each of the sides. So if I only want this side at 35%, but I want the rest in pixels, then I can do so. Now, what is the benefit of pixels to percentage? Pixels will always remain exactly what it is. If I set it at 100 pixels at the top and 100 pixels at the bottom, it's not going to be bigger or smaller depending on the size. But with percentage, if I grab this column and I drag it, it will always take up 35% of that container. You will see the 100 pixels, the 100 pixels, and the 35 pixels on this side remain the same, but our percentage is always stretching. Go back to the settings. And let's put this one also again on pixels and 35 pixels. And now it becomes really evident what is the purpose of padding. If I compare this column to these two next to it, yeah, this one is much, much better. It gives us definition. It gives us that separation. It makes it easy for users to find the information you want. It is the same when you think of a book or any textbook that you have. We have paragraphs, we have sentences, and then we have different sections within it. We have headings. And all of this is designed to make the user experience better. If everything is squashed, our eyes just run over it. If things are separated, we get structure and it leads the user's eye to where we want them to go. In this case, you're immediately going to go to mornings and it will catch your eye and you will change out the color, the fonts and the styling to your pleasure. We can now go ahead and also apply the padding for these two columns. An easy way to do that in Brizzy is to go to the settings, right click and then select copy. Now, when I go to this column, I can simply right click here and select paste styles. And for this one, also paste styles. Where padding is going to come in now is that I want a little bit more space here on the left and the right. So I'll go to this column, settings, styling, and the one on the left, I'll increase to 50. Then for this column, I'll do the opposite. I'll go to the right padding and increase that to 50. Slight little difference, but it gives us a little bit more of a balanced feeling. As I mentioned, you're going to find padding everywhere. If I go to the text heading of this one, select the text element, go to the settings and styling, and padding pops up here again. Do we want to apply padding? Yes, you can if you need to. I want a little bit more separation between this heading and then the rest of the text, and I can do that with padding. Just note, many things you see in website design can be done in many other ways. In the margins video, we talk how you can do this with margins. You can also do it with the spacer element. But in this case, we're going to use padding. To do that, we first decouple all the sides. Then we go to the bottom and I'll add it to 16 pixels. And immediately we have nice separation between the heading and our text. And then for the rest, we can do the same by decoupling all the sides and adding that 16 pixels at the bottom. I think the takeaway here for padding is that padding is found everywhere, every element, every section. It brings that negative space, the transparent area between the border of the element and the content. And that creates structure, it makes things pop out, and it gives you better layout. The tip I gave you at the beginning, if you're not sure if you have enough padding, just add a little bit more because it's usually better to have more space than less space. When things are squashed and all cramped in, it's very difficult to keep the user's attention on that area. The other important thing to remember when working in Brizzy Cloud or Brizzy WordPress is that padding settings are responsive. For this, we mean that when you go to tablet or mobile device, you can change the padding settings and it won't affect any of the other responsive designs. Currently, we're in desktop. To go to tablet, we go to the left side here where the little computer screen is and we select tablet. Here you can see everything looks again a little bit squashed and it's because the padding settings aren't sufficient for this. I'll go to the column, 
And we have already some default settings applied here, but I'm going to link them all. And in this case, just drag it up to around, let's say 30. Same for these two, but instead of doing each one individually, I'll right click, select copy, go to the next column, paste styles, and the same for this one, paste styles. And in this case, I will have to make some adjustments to my topography to make sure that they can fit in nicely. This is a great place where you can set up topography styles within your global styling to ensure you can just do it in one place. The same for mobile. Let's go down to mobile and this time I'm going to use a shortcut. Great way to cycle through the mobile responsive views, the desktop and the tablet is your control command key on your keyboard and the plus or a minus. So if you say control minus, command minus, you move down to mobile. And if you say control plus, command plus, you move up. And this way you can cycle through all of those responsive designs. Definitely, we need to apply the padding here. Go to the column. I'll link all the padding and I'll type in 25, a little bit less for my mobile device. Then I'll right click on the column, select copy. And I'll go to the other columns, paste styles and paste styles. Look how with just padding, it suddenly looks like a professional section that you have designed. The final note here is that actually working within Brizzy, the development and designing team have already considered that you will need padding whenever you are building out a web page. Let's add a new block and I'll go to create your own. And then we bring in columns. Let's do that. We bring in a column. Let's bring in a text element and then another text element. I'll bring in an image and under the image, I'll bring in a button. Let's change the first text to a heading, heading one. We leave the text and let's change out the image also to something interesting. And then we can shift the button to the left. But if I look from a distance at this section that I've just built out, it actually looks fine. We see there is some padding applied. If I go to the column, and this is by default, the settings you will see under styling, there is already padding applied, five pixels at the top and bottom and 15 pixels on the left and the right. And you will find other such helpful little guides also applied. For example, if I go to the text element, you will see that there are margins applied. Instead of using padding, margins have been applied in this case. The same you're going to find with the image, margins applied, and also with the button. So you're going to find that many of these styling conveniences are already there. The development and the designing team thought of this, how you can quickly bring these elements onto your page and already have a page that is aesthetically correct. As we know, different strokes for different folks. So maybe the 15 and five pixels don't work for you. And if you need extra space and what you are designing needs that extra space, you know where to find the padding and how to make it look good. In this case, I want to drag it out a little bit more, but then I want more space here on the right. I will go to my column, my styling, and then on the right column, I will put this to 15% to give it more space. So when I put content here in the second column, it's not so squashed and you have that nice little white bar margin in the middle to create that separation. Don't be scared of padding. Padding makes things look better on your page and your website, and it will really help you to create that structure and layout. Look at all the templates that we have within Briz and you will have great ideas of how you can use padding. And you combine that, of course, with other features such as borders and margins. That brings us to the end here on Back to Basics with JP here at Brizzy. Remember to subscribe, give us a like. And for more information and what's going on in the world of Brizzy, visit us at brizzy.io.